In today's show, we're gonna use the Power Automate Desktop Web Recorder. And so the Web Recorder lets you automate a web-based task. So in our case, we gotta go click the mouse about 265 times. And so I'm gonna show you how to automate that, put it in a loop, and just kind of get more familiar with this automation tool. Should be fun. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're gonna to learn about the Web Recorder. So the idea here is that with Power Automate Desktop Flows, remember those are those ones you can run on your local PC, so Windows 10, Windows 11, right? The licensing's included, they're free to get started, or not to get started, but to use them as long as you're just on the PC. And so I realized like in the first video, we did some automation by scraping a web page, sending an email, sending an Excel, and I'll put a link to that video somewhere if you didn't see that one. But so today I realized I get the same email all the time around, hey, you've got 265 flow approvals. So from using cloud flows and demoing demos and teaching classes over the years, I've got 265 of those I've never responded to. And so the only way to respond to those that I have found is to go and click the mouse, click, 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 click. I was like, hey, I bet desktop flows can do this. And so I played with it a little bit and I was absolutely right, they can, and it's kind of, not too bad to set up. Like we're just going to use a little wizard type of thing, not wizard. We're going to do a little recorder and kind of work our way through it. So anyway, let's switch over to my desktop and let's see if we can build this thing. So the first thing I want you to see on my desktop here is you can see I'm greeted with this email every day. I have 265 approvals waiting for your response. That's too many. So, and if we go over here, you know, into a flow and then to approvals, you can see that they're just, there's approvals to do for days. And the way that you approve one of these is you come in here, you click on the little check mark, you say approve, and then you're like, all right, yeah, that all looks great, I don't care, I literally just want them to go away, they're from demos I've done, so we say confirm, and then after a few seconds, I click done down here, right? So that's it, but now I've got 264 of those, too many for me. So what I did was I fired up old Power Automate Desktop Flow and said, hey, let's see if I can do this with a flow. I haven't done it before, but it kind of made sense to me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on new flow over here. We're gonna give it a name. And so we will call this video uh, clean, clean up flows. I don't know, something like that. And then we're going to say create. So after a minute, it kind of launches us into this designer and we have all the space to do what we want to do. So I'm like, all right, great. I know what I want to do, but I don't really know how to like write all these actions. There's a bunch of actions over here I could probably piece together, but I don't understand that. And so what I did see though, up here at the top, is there's something called the web recorder. So if you click on the web recorder, it's going to close down flow. It's gonna say, all right, what web browser do you want to use? And now this is only gonna work if when you installed the Power Automate desktop flows, you got the, uh, you chose to install the client. Uh, right, the integration point for either Chrome or Edge. And so you can go here to more info if you need to do any of that. I did all that, I just checked the box by default and never had to think about it again. And if you kind of look over here, you can see the little Power Automate um, icon in my browser, so I know it's also there. So with that done then, I'm gonna choose Edge because that is my browser, and we're gonna say Next. And it opens up a new Edge instance, and I can get some Edge cash back apparently, I don't need that. And so it's like, all right, where do you want to go? So before you start recording over there, you want to go to kind of as far into the process as you can. So I would go to flow.com, I'd expand action items, and then I would say approvals. Because this is the page that I want to work for from, right? And I kind of screwed this up the first time because I was like, all right, now I'll just start doing my thing and this will work. Now you notice it automatically put the URL over here. Now what you have to do is you now you want to hit record. This is like I said, I kept screwing this up when I was doing it. So I'm trying to save you guys. So you hit record, and now it's recording what I'm doing. And notice I see these little red tags everywhere. And so it's like, all right, here's kind of where I see as a uh, tool. So I'm just going to go to the check mark, and I'm going to click on approve. When I do that, you can see over on the left, it, it click, said click on that element. So then here I can flip through all this stuff. I could change this, maybe instead of approve, you wanna change this to reject. Reject. You could hit the drop down, choose reject. I'm not going to. I am gonna add a little comment and say, did this with automation? I think it's how you spell automation. If not, well, you guys can laugh at me. There you go, so I put a little text in there. And then finally, I said confirm. And so you can see, populate text area with did this with automation, very cool. Clicked element and web page. All right, so that all got done. 
And then now I want to close this, right? So I need to click this done down here in the bottom left also. So we're gonna say done again. And so then it captured that. And there you go, it drops us back here. So that's the cycle that I wanna record. All set, so we're gonna say finish. Now when you say finish, it brings us over here. You can see, look, auto-generated content starts, stops, and these are all those steps. So it put all those steps in for me. If I wanted, I could have went over here and figured all that out myself. I mean, I'm not smart enough, but you're probably smart enough. So if you're smart enough, you can figure all these out yourself, but the web recorder did it, awesome. So now what I wanna do is I wanna see if this works. So if we look over here, we can see, please approve the new employee from October 27th at 11.24. Clearly has teaching class because there's a bunch of those back to back to back. And so there we go. So what we're gonna do, we see what's over there. We're going to click on the run button up here at the top and give it a go. So we'll click on run. You'll notice what it does. It opens a new browser window. It starts spinning. We're going to hope, there you go. It went, it went, it went. Did this with automation. It clicked confirm. I think it's gone. Yeah, look. So this one is missing, right? The 1124 is gone. And yeah, right? Pretty cool. So there you go. We know that that'll work. So I could just run this 263 more times. Yes, I'm gonna try and keep a running count in my head how many there are. No, I'm just not. But anyway, so I can keep running this, but I was like, all right, cool. I know that I can do it once, and I know I could literally hit the button a whole bunch of times and make it run. But if we look over here, we also have some different types of loops. Now, if you expand the loops, you can see that we've got a for each loop. So that would be the type of loop if you had a number and you wanted to go through it, like, go pull a table, and then for every object in that table, do this thing. That'd be one type of loop. Um, here's another loop. So this would do it a specified number of times. So loop 100 times or 263 times of mine. I was really tempted to use that one because I knew the exact number, but I didn't. Uh, loop condition. So, you know, loop until something uh, proves to be true. So loop until that table turns out to be blank. Maybe. So some different options here for looping. And I haven't used any of those. So I wasn't like, I was like, all right, whatever one I pick, I'm going to have to go down that rabbit hole. So I was like, all right, what else is there? So I minimize this and I went to down here to browser automation. And so in here, what I found was interesting is there is a, um, a conditional block, you know, unspecified whether or not a um, web page contains something. Because if you think about it, if I loop through here, or if I open this up and this check mark wasn't here, then there wouldn't be any more to approve. If this check mark was here, then there's things that need to be approved and I want to get rid of everything, right? So I want it to the blank. So I was like, that could be kind of an interesting one. So I was like, all right, let's try that one out. So I said, hey, if web page contains, and I pulled this over here, all right, and it's like, all right, what web page? Well, I want to use the browser. So remember, this is the variable that got created by this step. Remember the first, or step number two up here, the browser got created and stored in that variable. So it's saying, you want to use that browser? I do. And I want to check to see if a web page contains a specific element. Right, I can also, doesn't contain, contains text, doesn't contain text. So some different things to look for. Now this is one of the pieces that blew my mind. I was like, all right, those both make sense, but now how do I tell it to look for that check mark? And so I hit the UI element. And look at this crazy thing. It understands that it recorded and it found all these elements. And so if I click on the I right here, look at that. That's the check mark we were looking for. Like it was literally the first thing. How easy could that have been? But as you can see that there's a whole bunch of things that we could check for here. Well, there's four, but that to me was like mind blowing. Like it just understood like I'm dumb and I didn't want to understand exactly how it knew that. I just like, I, yeah, there's a pretty picture of the thing I was looking for. Perfect. So we'll say select and there you go, save. And so then this is an if, right? So this isn't really a loop. This is more of just a condition, right? So uh, if this, then do this. Okay, so I'm like, all right, let's make sure that that works before I get too carried away. So then what I did here was I, I kind of struggled with what I wanted to do. And finally, I found the ability to play a sound. I don't know. You know me. I like to just pull in random stuff. But play a sound from the system and play the beep. I don't know. We'll say save. And so the idea now is that if it's going to run this once, so it's going to get rid of one of the approvals for me, that's fine. And then if the web page uh, still contains a check mark, which it should, then it'll play a sound. So it was just a way for me to like 
validate. Remember, I'm always trying to solve small problems. So I want to validate that this thing worked before I incorporate any additional logic. So let's, let's hit run. So same thing again. We'll do run. It'll open up a browser. It'll wait on it to load here. Hopefully it loads fast enough. Do -do -do -do. Okay, so this happened to me in testing also. So I'm glad it kind of happened here. Um, so basically it timed out. It took too long to load. And so what I got away with last time was I was able to come up here to this step and I basically said, hey, I want to um, advance and I wanted to adjust the timeout. So I changed this timeout from 60 seconds to 90 seconds and this worked. The other thing I could have done, I guess, is, you know, made some type of condition or I could just put in a standard delay, different ways to handle it. But unfortunately, we all know that our friend, uh, Power Automate's you know, website there sometimes takes a little longer to run. But so adding this has fixed it for me thus far. But keep in mind, if you run into those type of delays, you will have to add some type of like, hey, flow, wait a second. So let's we'll say run. So it's going to try it again. Let's cross our fingers. There you go. It ran this time. And so you can say, did this with automation. And we heard the beep. So we are in good shape. So we know that our logic is solid. <laughs> you know what else I should probably do is probably have a step in my flow that says close these browsers, but I have not added that. How do we add that real quick? Let's do that. So let's go over here. We'll go over here and we'll say uh, X out of there. We'll go to uh, browser automation. There is a closed web browser. We'll just pull down here the end. And then we'll say, hey, close the browser that we've been launching. Save. That would have saved me a lot of time during my testing. Why didn't I think of that sooner? But let's make sure it works. So let's hit run again. And then all this should fire. All right, there goes the beep. And more importantly, the browser closed. Cool, okay. So we're in great shape now, right? We are getting everything uh, what we wanted, other than we don't really want to sound. So what I thought about here was a different way of going at this, right? So now that I've got this whole, um, play sound, what I want to do, or sorry, I know the play sound is playing when the condition happens. Now I want to add some logic in here. So I think what I can do is go over here to flow control, expand that. And then I'm going to go down here to go to, I'm going to drag a go to and put it in here. So put a go to right here. And where do you want to go to? Oh, I don't have a label yet, so I can't go anywhere. So we'll just cancel. Uh, so before we can go somewhere, we got to have a label. So I'm going to put the label up here. And where do I want to go? I want to jump into uh, clicking the link on the web page, right? So we go back up here. Label name is um, start in approval. Approval, something like that. Once again, I probably misspelled it. Uh, oh, I, did you not like my name? How rude of you. There you go, so apparently you can't have spaces in names. Who knew? All right, so there's my label. So now if we go back over here to go to, right here, and where do you wanna to go to? Start an approval and save. We'll get rid of the sound because I don't need that, so we will delete that one. And so now what happens, right? So we're going to launch our Edge window, get to the location in the browser, makes sense. We have a label, which we're not gonna do anything with, there's just, there's just a label there, cool. Then we're going to click on a web page, right? We're going to do all of our approval stuff. And then we're going to say, hey, if all that stuff is still there, remember, if the little check mark is still there, then go back up here. And so I thought this was a better way than doing a loop for us in the beginning here, because this is how I learned to program, right? If you think back to my like 11th grade, you know, computer programming class, which was, you know, in QBasic, I think. Anyway, with that class, that was a lot of what we would do, right? We would just go to the spot in the code. So we didn't have like actual loop logic, but it is a loop. It's just a, it's not, you know, the loop controls over here. It's more like, hey, if this is true, then go back up there. If this is true, go back up there. And so that way it'll just keep going back up there until we run out of check marks. So that seems kind of cool to me. So what I'm gonna do now is we're going to hit run and see if it starts chugging through these things, right? So we'll say run. All right, it's in there, it's doing its thing, it's pressing the button, there's our go-to. Look, it snapped right back to the top again, and it should snap to the top again. 
And so there you go. In theory, this thing should start chugging through and spit out, you know, go through all 260, whatever's left and do its thing. Now over here, because I don't want to wait forever, you know, I don't want you guys to watch me talk while this happens. We're going to say stop because I don't actually want this to run right now. But oh, wait, you know what I forgot? I finished recording. I just remembered. I forgot to tell you guys, you know, now that we're done with the flow, it works. We've proven it. Make sure you hit save. I like literally almost closed it without saving it for myself. And then like I told you, I want this to learn for me. So that would have been silly. So anyway, back to what I was saying before, but just want to remind you guys to hit save. You get the idea, right? You saw those things starting to process. And, and there you go. We have now written some desktop flow automation. You know, this, like I said, this is not perfect. You know, we could still, depending on what you were trying to automate, you might want to incorporate a delay, right? So what would you do? Be over here, delay. And I think we did this in the first video. Oh, no, wait. It's not a delay. It's a wait. So you could add a wait. So if you're having a hard time with the web page loading fast enough or taking too long for all the pieces to get there, you could add that into the mix. You could use one of those other loop controls that we talked about. There's so much to explore here. You know, I'm not saying we're writing best practices today. What I'm saying is we're learning pieces because that's what desktop flows are about. Just like that's what cloud flows are about. It's just like power apps are about, power virtual agents are about. All of those things are really about learning a bunch of little pieces and then assembling them to back for what you want. So hopefully you enjoyed this. This was, you know, a little bit different, but this is literally something that's been driving me crazy for months. And I don't know why, but this morning I decided it was the day for me to fix it for myself. And I was like, oh, you guys would want to see. So if you have other ideas for Power Automate desktop flows you want to see, leave them below. I'm always up for ideas. You know, I am not like shifting my focus. I do not want to do these things full time by any means. That's not my world. But I think sometimes these, you know, these come up and they help us do things that, you know, just make our lives easier. And the more we know about the Power Platform, this is part of the Power Platform, the better off we are at it. So I guess with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Hey, me again. Before you go, click on the subscribe button, right? Join the list of 100,000 plus people that subscribed already. Or if you need any help, right, check us out at Power Apps 91. We do big projects, little projects. We do training. We do everything, and we can help you. Or if you want to see more videos, you probably do, then just click on the playlist above. Cool? Thanks, and have a great day.